verses 1 through 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of and line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Now while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were <coughs> shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Mr. Mike. Uh-oh. Yeah, All right. Um, I want to let you all know, I told Eric it was going to be a little goofy. This outfit is, is part of the sermon I will explain later. Okay, so this there, there's a reason for this goofiness, okay? But I want to start last it week. It doesn't match. I know. That's, I'm, I'm goofy. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't match. I'm goofy. <laughs> Hello? Your wife left you out of the house with something that didn't match. My wife would never let that. Well, oh, yeah. she, didn't, she, she really didn't have a choice in the outfit. So I want to start out. Last week, I, I have an app that I, I, I just read the, news, the, the, the headlines. And anything to do with COVID, I don't read, all right? But there was one that really kind of irked me. It really made me upset. They talked about Christianity is in trouble because nobody knows when Jesus was born. They're talking about the birthday, the actual birthday. My first thought was, there was no calendar back then. How would you know the actual date? <laughs> they, oh, by the way, the article kind of forgot to mention that part. Mm -hmm. Okay? The whole point is, is that back between the 3rd and the 5th century, the church decided they made a Gregorian calendar, and they needed to come up with a birth date for Jesus. And they kept, due to astronomy, it's science, ironically, that, oh, we can't have science in Christianity, but due to science, they determined that he was born after the winter solstice, before the spring solstice. So, he, so my mind, they only dealt with two seasons, planting season, harvesting season. There was no winter, fall, summer, spring. It was all based on seasons. So at the, after looking at it, they decided it was a little bit after the winter solstice. And part of the reason for that was because at solstice is the darkest time of the year. But then what happens on the next day? It gets lighter, lighter, mm -hmm. lighter, and lighter. So the theory is he was born when the light gets more and the dark goes less. Now that's the theory. They just decided not to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. They just want to let you know Christianity, oh my God, you don't know when he's born, you know. But they didn't say he wasn't born. <laughs> they just said... They don't know when he was born. I go, so wait, you believe, but you don't have a date. That upsets you. So that kind of got me upset. I got, I got to admit that. Okay, so I just want to get that off my chest. Okay. Anyway, I realized that as I was growing up, you know, as a kid, we went to midnight mass all the time. And usually at midnight mass, you're too excited. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, you didn't care what the priest was saying. You just wanted to get home and open gifts. That's right. That's what you wanted. It was the gifts. Okay? I mean, we were all kids at one point. I know I was. but still am. And that's what it comes down to. So I want to know a few things. Jan, since you're the birthday girl, what was the best gift you got as a kid that you can remember? You know, I was, I kind of been thinking about this because I knew there was something you wanted to ask us. I think the best gift? Oh, gosh. I do. I, I don't know. I don't know. I 
suppose when I was really little, maybe a, a doll or something that I really wanted. I always wanted to get a car, and I never did. <laughs> did you ever get a Chatty Cathy doll? I did get a Chatty Cathy Oh, my God. Doll, but um, my cousin did, and her name was Kathy, and she was Chatty. <laughs> <laughs> she was, and she still is. Anyway, um, like a material gift? Yeah. Because as kids, we didn't know about the gift God gave us, so it's more material than anything else. Oh, absolutely. A stereo, I think, maybe a stereo. Oh, that's cool. Cindy, what about you? Oh, wait, wait. Eric will do yet. Yeah. Cindy, what about you? Silly sand I wanted. That's the only thing I asked Santa for that year. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. I did. I was so excited. And Eric? A bicycle. Ooh. An English bicycle. Remember the English racers? And we were the only kids in town that had English racing bicycles. Cool. So, we felt so cool. So those meant me, personally, Hot Wheels. Anything Hot Wheels, I was happy. It didn't matter. Now, Tim, I know you're new, but you're the youngest one here, so. <laughs> oh, uh, well, now I got a car for Christmas. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. That sort of things. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that, that does kind of work. Really I'll, I'll agree with that, all right? But the thing is, we got, as we got older, <laughs> I mean, as we, got, as we got older, right, gifts change. And, and I realized that when my parents, when we got, when our kids, we all got too old, my parents decided they were going to give us money. And of course, everybody talked about the money. We didn't talk about Jesus' birth. We didn't talk about the gifts we got. Now we were talking about money. Okay? And let's be honest, all right? Christmas is not about money. You know, as you get older, Christmas is not about a goofy hat that you wear to a party to make everybody happy. All right? Christmas is not about a goofy jacket that you wear to a party and make, you have a little fun and get some attention because you kind of like the goofy jacket. Okay, this is not what Christmas is about. All right? And Christmas is not about a cute little cat tie that has my kitty on it and her kitty on it. That's not what this is about. Christmas is about the gift that God gave us, the gift of salvation, the hope that we need. It's about an event. And uh, I was listening to Dallas Jenkins, the creator of The uh, Chosen, and he made a comment that, I re that really stuck. And the comment was, is, the birth of Christ, the birth of Jesus, was the single most biggest event in human history. He changed the world. He changed everything. You can name anything you want. You can name any event you want. You can name D-Day. You can name the Battle of Midway. You can name the, the, the assassination of Lincoln. They don't compare to the birth of Christ. His salvation. That's what, that's what God gave us. He gave us salvation. He gave us hope. He gave us something to go beyond. And then I did a little more reading. And I don't, I don't remember the numbers, but there's a number of places in the Old Testament that prophesies Jesus is coming. So even back then, the Lord knew in the Old Testament it wasn't going to work. He knew, okay, I got plan B. And he used plan B. Love, compassion, faith, hope, salvation. All right? Just remember, hope. We were at a sermon, you know, we went to uh, Christmas Eve Mass at another church, and he talked about hope, because he was right. Dave Ferguson was right. We live in a very weary world, okay? We live in a very exhausting world, okay? My wife knows she has to put up with me. I'm exhausted almost every day dealing with this COVID crap, people getting their cars stolen, people getting shot. It's a rough world right now, and we need hope. That's the hope right there. That's our hope. Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the light. You know, and it's amazing what you learn. Um, I was, again, I was reading, and the, the first thing God did after Jesus was born, well, told, well, who did he tell? Did he show himself? Did he show the angel in front of Caesar in Rome and said, I brought a Savior? No. Did he go to Herod? No. Did he go to the Pharisees and Sadducees? No. no. Well, there's a good reason why. They were already corrupted. They were corrupted by money. They were corrupted by sex. They were corrupt. 
Jesus had to go to the low of the low, start at the bottom, work his way up. So who needs to visit? The shepherds. Now, the shepherds are the ones who bore the lambs that are used for the sacrifice. Now, these shepherds are, are pure. They're clean. They were wrapped in swaddling clothes when the sheep, when the, when the little sheep are born. The pure ones are wrapped in swaddling clothes and are laid in a manger to be protected until the Pharisees and Sadducees come to pick them up. So when Jesus showed up to those shepherds, those were the shepherds. Those were the shepherds that bore those sheep, that washed those sheep. And do you know why shepherds are so disguised? They don't like them. Ick, yuck, pooey. They don't, they're low and low. Part of the reason they're low and low is they don't follow Jewish tradition. They can't. Okay? Because we treat Jewish, Jewish tradition is wash your hands, eat, wash your hands, eat, wash your hands, eat, pray, wash your hands, eat. The shepherds didn't have time to do that. They had to watch these sheep every minute of every day. They didn't have the opportunity to stop and go, oh, wow, I've got to wash my hands again. I'll be back. Because by the time they get back, the sheep will be gone. Then they'd be out chasing the sheep all the time. So they, But think about that. They were despised by the, everybody because they were doing the job that nobody else wanted to do. That's kind of sad. So I can see why God first showed, showed the angels. And the angels showed themselves to the shepherds, saying, your Savior has come for all people, not just for the Jews, not just for the Pharisees and Sadducees, not just for the Romans, not just for the Gentiles, everybody. Yeah, the Jews did not like that. The Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like that. The other thing they didn't like was that they were waiting, and they created this. They were waiting for Christ to come down, grow up, have a sword in hand. We're going to take the Romans. We're going to kick their butt. We're going to be free. That's not what they got. That's part of the reason they didn't accept Jesus. They didn't get what they wanted. They wanted that hero. Christ was a hero in a different way. But they didn't understand it. The low of the low understood it. You know, my favorite thing, I love it when angels, the first thing they say is, don't be afraid. Really? I think I'd be, you know, shaking in my boots, personally. But, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing the gift that he gave us. And then, then you look at the prophecy, and then you go to the mangers, right? They used a feeding trough to put Christ in. I mean, how low can you get? And the feeding trough, sorry, they got, Jesus got wrapped in swaddling clothes, given to him by the manger's owner. Now, swaddling clothes is what they wrap the lambs in before they go get slaughtered. And then when they're first born, that's what they're wrapped in. And that's how they're taken care of. Again, another symbol of prophecy, which the Pharisees and Sadducees just totally ignored. They didn't get it. Now, we're lucky. We have the Bible to tell us what happened. Would we have gotten it back then? I don't know. I really don't know. Would we have followed Jesus back then? I don't know. I'm just glad I didn't live back then because, boy, it was really dirty. That's all i got to say. You know? And the other thing that I noticed, if you have, if you, I know most of you have seen it, but not a lot. And then is the Christmas special by the Chosen. When Jesus was just being born, Joseph looks out the manger and he sees these bright lights, the aurora borealis type of lights. I interpreted that as the angels coming down and the shepherds saying, hey, look what we got. He's here. He's now. He's ready. Jesus was born to save us. God gave us an out. And there's not much you have to do to accept this. Not much you have to do at all. You have to believe. Remember, Jesus said, the only way through the Father is through me. And he's not asking you for money. He's not asking you for your car, your house. He's not asking you for donations. He just wants you to believe. That's all that he wants. You know, that's pretty good. And I think to go along with it, you've got to kind of be a decent human being. You know, you can't go around tripping people, or as Eric talks about the, the kid in a wheelchair, that which would you do? If, if his books fell on the ground, which person would you be? Would you be the one to laugh? Would you be the one to make fun of him? Would you be the one to stand to the side and just see what happens? Because it's entertaining. It's, oh, look what's going on. Or would you be the one to help the man pick up half the child, pick up his books, get behind a wheelchair and take him to his next class? Who would you be? 
And that, that's what I think that's all about. So it really doesn't cost you anything. It just costs you being nice. How hard is that? Yes, I know in this day of COVID, it's hard to be nice. Especially because we all had little issues with restaurants, and it wasn't their fault. And it can get frustrating. But you just got to tone it down. Okay? You just got to tone it down. But he is our salvation. That night is an event that we celebrate every year. And it is an event. It is not a date. That's the other thing. There are things today, everything is, a, you know, I see it, uh, you know, come to Scrum America in May 1492. They do dates. No. Everything in this event. And the events have people. And just remember, it's an event. It is not a date. And I think sometimes we forget about that. That's why I say Christmas is not about a jacket. Yeah, you can work to a Christmas party. It's fun. You know, you can get Christmas presents. Not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. What I'm saying is at some point during Christmas, and we can even call today Christmas. We're celebrating Christmas today. He could have been born today. We don't know. So I'm going to say he was born today. So we're going to celebrate Christmas today. Merry Christmas, everybody. Amen. Remember that. When we go to dinner, when we go to breakfast, we'll tell the waitress, Merry Christmas. Because today could be. We don't know. Every, I mean, I wish every day was Christmas. It'd be great, wouldn't it? But guess not. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, since I've kind of come back to Christ, you know, I realize I've been blessed. I've been blessed with a great kid, you know, great family, great wife. You know, I have so many blessings, I, I couldn't live this alone. You know, and I realize that, you know, it was very selfish to think about the money when we should have been thinking about Christ. You know, when you're a kid, you don't think about, you know, I'm just sitting in that mass, you know, when is this going to be over? You know, my dad would, you know, either clonk us on the head to wake us up, or one of my brothers and sisters would rip me in the sides. They wake up. You know, we didn't understand. You know, and, and I think even in the religion that I grew up in, they didn't tell us the salvation, the hope that Christ was. The message was kind of skewed. I really don't remember the message, but I sure don't remember this. Okay? And I owe the gathering for this. If it wasn't for the gathering, I wouldn't know none of this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting, reading my Bible, studying William Barclay, going online, getting a lot of opinions to help me to stand up here and talk to everybody about what this means. Now, I could be totally wrong, okay? I don't think so, because Eric's not making a funny face. So I consider that a good thing, all right? But remember, it's all about salvation. Just remember that. Even, even today, just say, thank you, God. I need that. I need that hope, especially in this world. We need that hope. Because I sure don't see it being very strong right now. And, and Ben, I'm going to go back to the AT&T commercial. If I get two people to hope, and they get two people to hope, and they get two people to hope, and they get two people to hope, it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. All of a sudden, instead of having all this negativity, you've got all these people just hoping that, excuse me, Let's just get done with this and just move on. All right? Enough of the negativity, enough of the fighting, enough of the politics, enough of the crap. As Eric was saying, was it Bolsheviter? Bolgeschichter. Bolgeschichter. German. I'll never get that right. <laughs> but enough of that. All right? Let's just get back to basics. And again, I'm going to give advice. Don't watch the news. You know, it's just, it's just negative. That's the problem I have. It's the negativity that I feel that really can get to you. True. <laughs> Don't True. let it eat you. Remember... Hope. Remember the ultimate gift. Remember salvation. Remember when things go good, say, blessed be God. Amen. And when things go bad, pray to God. I mean, I had a bad week. Not personally, but surrounding me. My boss lost his father. Somebody I know had a six-year-old son get a stroke. And we lost Kathy Smith. That's a bad week. All right now, me personally, does it affect me? Yes, because I know all these people and I know how they hurt. And I have to tell you, I gave the prayer warriors of the gathering a message about the young man, the six-year-old who had a stroke. And I sat there and I said, okay, the next day, the guy comes in and tells us his son's out of danger. He's going to make it. Got some rehab to do, He's not, but it really won't affect him in the long run. So he'll be a kid again. But I mean, talk about just, you know, getting a prayer answered that quickly. I thank God for that. I thank God that the doctors and nurses knew what to do to keep that child alive. 
I can't imagine my son having that at six years old. I mean, I had a son who had surgery when he was three months old. That is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying to realize that at three months old, this poor little baby's got to go under surgery. And all you can do, and at the time, I, I wasn't really a Christian. You know, I was more logical and that type of thing. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. But I do know that I wish I had been more Christian at the time because I really needed it. You know, but he survived. Um, and I'm blessed that he's here today. You know, he's had to go through some medical things, and I'm blessed that he's here every day. And I thank God he's here every day. He keeps me grounded. He makes me realize what life is really about. So with that, let's all end with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I really want to thank you for the gift of salvation and hope the day that you came down to this earth to live among us and realize how messed up we are and that we really need you. Dear Lord, just continue to pass the message of hope and salvation to the world. Maybe one day all of us will get it and we can actually live in peace and harmony. Amen. Thank you, Mike.